Why do we cooperate? This is central to the INET program on caring economics. And it's an important question because humans are reflexive creatures. Their understanding of why we cooperate structures their brains and that determines how they cooperate. And therefore, this, the answer to this question has huge influence. Now, economists' answer is very simple. We cooperate because of economic synergies. When I buy and, uh, or I sell to somebody else, I do so to make myself better off. So in millions of transactions around the world, people are just making themselves better off and that induces them to cooperate. It's that simple. When markets compensate people for all the costs and benefits, then the pursuit of individual material gain leads to material prosperity for everyone. That's the basic idea underlying Adam Smith's invisible hand, and that's the economist story of cooperation. And that helps explain our huge material success, why world gross product per capita has increased fourfold since 1950, why extreme poverty has been reduced by nearly a billion people over the past 20 years. So there's a lot that can be explained here, and it rests on the assumption of homo economicus, as Tanya said. And that tells us that people make choices to maximize their material well-being given their preferences and beliefs, which is simple, but there's tons of research outside of economics that shows that it's wrong. And also, it does not help us explain our huge problems of global cooperation. We don't cooperate in climate change or resource depletion. We don't cooperate with when there are banking failures or sovereign debt failures. We don't cooperate when there is huge youth unemployment. And it also doesn't help us explain why this huge rise in material prosperity, the blue line, doesn't make us much happier, which is the red line. And that, the reason for that is that we become accustomed to the acquisitions and we value them less once other people have acquired them as well. So given that the pleasures of materialism are so fleeting, why do we devote so much time and effort to this stuff? And the answer is because everyone else is doing so as well, because we've acquired the habit of doing so, and because we vastly overestimate the pleasure we get from status goods. And therefore, we need an expanded uh, view of human nature to understand why our pursuits don't lead to durable well-being. And as Tanya said, that will involve our access to multiple motivation systems that makes us interconnected. And it's these interconnections that are at the heart of caring economics. So homo economicus relying on selfish individualism identifies only few areas of cooperation, whereas this new view of human nature identifies far more areas of cooperation because it identifies many more areas of interdependence between human beings. So different settings of human beings activates different motivations, that leads to different choices, that leads to different interrelations among human beings. And these interrelations are governed by social norms and moral values. And these are three different uh, social norms, reciprocity, if I help you, you help me, that helps cooperation. Reputation, Manfred has talked about, that uh, engenders cooperation. And many behavioral norms reward conformity or punish violations, and that also induces uh, cooperation. Now, here are moral values. The value of fairness may, helps us identify traits that enable people to cooperate, very valuable for us. The value of care makes us sensitive to suffering and wants us to alleviate the suffering. Loyalty makes us sensitive to people who are team players. Authority enables us to cooperate within social groups. Sanctity is a value that enables us to have reverence for causes that unite social groups. And liberty makes us resist tyrants and cooperate among ourselves instead of being dictated to. So moral values play a really useful role. And the INET um, project 
on caring economics is intended to widen the purview of economics in order to identify more and more areas in which people cooperate. So that which we know now in economics identifies only a small number of areas of cooperation and this wider view of human nature will hopefully free up a lot of forces that humans and reflect as reflexive creatures would be able to exploit. Thank you.